Hello and welcome to this week's Ask Me Anything Python. In this week's episode we have two more items. That's one question and one featured module. Okay, so the first question is... Hello Mike, is South necessary in Django 1.9? Is it functionally built in Django 1.9. And then later he comes back and basically realizes that yeah, it is uh, not necessary in Django 1.9. So uh, he comes back and says, sorry, just saw that you replayed to this question. I have wasted about an hour's reading about South. Well, I don't necessarily think you've wasted about an hour or two hours even because um, you might well be building uh, new websites in South and that would be great. But um, in addition, you'll also find that yourself when you're working with other websites that have been built in the past, uh, you will ne not necessarily be stuck uh, in lovely nice 1.9 land, so to speak. What you might find is that you're working alongside uh, brand new sites, but also older sites that need that kind of knowledge. So if you know how to do South, as well as the new migrations for 1.9, then you pretty much know a lot more than most people, and you'll probably fire a lot better than most people too. So you might have learned South migrations and you feel like you've wasted your time, but you haven't. What you've done is you've increased your knowledge and your ability to work in a wide range of different versions of Django, which is really important. Okay, so this week we've got another featured module and this week's featured module is basically a Django um, Carton. And Django Carton is basically a shopping cart for Django. And it is very simple to set up and it's very easy to use and it will make your efforts in making um, e-commerce websites very very much more simple so here's the video okay so as usual the first steps to installing django con are to basically go to the command line and use pip to install and there as usual we do pip install and uh, the incredibly difficult to guess name is Django Carton. Once you've installed that, then you're ready to just go to your code and start setting up the different settings inside of your settings.py. Okay, so over in my project, um, I've added in the uh, Carton module, which is the one that links through to the objects or the classes that we're going to use to create our uh, shopping cart. And we're also going to link in something called shopping and shopping is the sample project or rather the example uh, that you get along with the code from the GitHub uh, system. So you basically can download, download that if you want to just customize it or else it gives you instructions on how to replicate that yourself. Later in the page, it just basically says around about, um, where is it? It's here somewhere. Uh, there you go. So it basically says all you need to do in your views is you need to implement that code there. And that's what this shopping uh, section does. So we've, in, we've downloaded that and I've unzipped it into its own folder as an app in here. Um, and it's got its own views in. And as you can see, it's already implemented the add and remove um, views as well as the shopping cart show um, so then we've got that on the page and then I've created my own uh, products app which basically uh, has a model nope has a model in there which is just a, a product with a name and a price and the price is just a float number um, just because that's you know, that's the quickest and easiest way to describe pounds and pence 
or dollars and cents or whatever else your your denominations are. So we've uh, created those models and in our views, in the shopping views, as you can see, it expects to be able to uh, import a product and also um, do the addition of it to the cart. And basically do, all it does is it creates an instance of the cart from carton and then sticks the session request object in there and creates all of the session information um, without actually creating any models. So if we go back to our settings, we also need to, uh, as well as that, as well as including carton, we need to say cart model product model is that. So that basically points to the models uh, or product model that I've defined over in my products app. If you want it somewhere else um, and you've got it in a different part of your pro yeah, project, then you change that bit. So for us, all we've done is included carton, then the shopping example uh, app, which basically gives us those views so we can add and remove products and also show a product. And then we've added in a products app that we created, which is where we've defined our model. And with that, we then just basically needed to include the URLs. So the only URLs that I include was a home URL from your home page and the shopping URLs from this shopping app. And that's going to take care of that whole um, creating a cart and adding in project or products into that cart. And then the show uh, product, oh, not product, the show page or URL will take care of showing what's in the cart. So how does the show page actually show what's in there? Well, if we go into the, the page itself, it uses some template tags. So it basically loads in the carton template tags, and then it uses this template tag here, um, which is an assignment um, template tag. Um, which basically says get cart, which is basically pull out the cart from the session and assign it to a variable in the cart. So notice that didn't actually get done inside of the view. It gets done inside of here by the template tag. Now it is possible to pull out the information from the cart because as you can see here, we can get a cart in the view by just pulling out the cart class and passing in the session and that gives us the current cart but in templates you can use the get cart template tag which then allows you to go and get all the items out of the cart and then do whatever you fancy doing with that and then the to in the end cart will give you a total count of what the current pounds and pence are in there so let's just have a quick look and see if we can get that to work in action and um, make sure we servers up and running which it is so then i've added three products in here which is basically um add cheese uh, ham or eggs now when we click this it's not going to look very pretty but it's only going to give us the message that says added and then notice we put in a url into there now how did we create that url in our index page, we used the whole for products and product uh, product in products, and created a URL using that. But then tacked on to the query string a product ID, and that's all we did, just to create those on the page. So over here, we've passed in that ID equals. And then when we call that, it basically calls the URL, the view URL for shopping um, and pulls out the ID from the request, gets that product and then adds it into the cart. And that's all kept in session. It's not actually saved in the database or anything like that. So it can get destroyed. 
um, if you want to then keep it in the database for future reference then you can basically use those that cart um, to go ahead and save it into the database with a few other models that you could create in addition but for the purposes of this it is just in session and that's pretty much all you really need to do for most shopping carts unless you're going to do something really complex um, so let's uh, look at the current contents of the cart and we can see I've already added in uh, two products so we've got a uh, product object um, let's just see if I can slightly alter that so we can get it to start displaying what it really is. So. Return uh, self dot name. Now, if you're using Python 3, that'll be uh, underscore underscore str. But uh, for me, I'm using Python 2 and that's how we do it and that's how we roll in python 2 so there you go now that it's done that it's done a quick roll through got the name of the actual product and it's given us that so if we go back um to our main page i can add some eggs in that's added that in if we go back we've now got eggs in our shopping cart and it's showing out the price but also gives us the total total cost and we're doing very little calculation there we're just literally adding in the products that we've been storing on our site so you can see it's dead simple to use django carton and uh, hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier for you when you're building your e-commerce websites okay so that's the end of this week's episode if you enjoyed that then uh, please click the like button down below and if you want to see more in the series, then click the subscribe button, which is also somewhere down, down there. And uh, thanks for watching.